never used a car share other than Uber. But their customers do. Do you know what Uber launched? Does anyone know when Uber launched? 2009. Do you know what the market cap of Uber is? $69 billion. Do you know what the market cap of Airbnb launched in 2008? It's $30 billion. So these conversations about how fast this is going to happen, I think our people are smoking crack. Because it's going to happen so fast, be as soon as it starts to figure it out. And it is difficult. And it, it is difficult delivering food. So whoever figures out how to deliver food cheap, which Amazon will, and it all comes in to why will they come at this category so fast and so hard? Because of frequency. See, we deliver to our customers, on average, 13, 11.2 times every 13 weeks. That means that we're at their home every week. So what they're looking at, Amazon's looking at, and why there's such an investment in this, is a frequency because once you get that, it's like a crack cocaine into somebody's arm. They can just come to you and put in your TV, the Prime, and everything. So when you look at this slide, and somebody said the UK slide, that number is actually wrong. The most recent number is 8.2% on the UK, and that's best. So the UK is about 8%. What you're seeing here, what we should be looking at, in my opinion, is where the investment dollars are going. And in the US, you're looking at tons of investment into the marketing of e-commerce. So they're putting their dollars against e-commerce. And everyone's talking about the meal kit business. I think you've all sort of Blue Apron. There's five meal upstarts in. Blue Apron is an amazing company, but it's not sticky. And I'm not saying that because without, with any disrespect to Blue Apron. I'm saying that because they have $800 million in sales and they can't go public and they've tried three times. And do you understand if you are, I would ask you for those of you who are looking at meal kit companies to look at the coupons that they, on the back end. So Google, you know, Google meal, uh, Blue Apron coupons. You don't have to pay full price for it. It's 65% off any day of the week. You go look at uh, the few Canadian versions, do the same. I think you'll find the same number. So we have an artificial sense that people are buying meal kit. They are trying it, but they're not sticking. What is the number one reason why meal kits aren't sticking in New York? They're embarrassed about the garbage that they have to bring down. Did you guys, that's, that's the, re, the reason when they did the analysis on why Blue Apron is sticking, is customers who continuously bring that amount of garbage down to the recycling are embarrassed. Crazy, huh? So what we look at, the, where we're, we see the markets going to Canada is going to be about, we think it would be 10 to 12 percent by 2000, whatever that says, 23. Uh, we think it could be faster, so we think it's on that part. Where we think, it, why we see that, and Walmart is one of the only retailers who's tra transforming themselves. So that's a big play. Now you, we play in the big world, but you have the two largest retailers in the world, Walmart and Amazon, and they are playing big. And so, they, when they buy something for $3.3 billion, they're playing big, so they're transforming the industry. And Am Amazon's transforming the industry. So you now have Amazon and Walmart playing big. They're coming, and they're gonna come strong. One of the interesting things about Walmart is that of those retailers that I quoted, Nordstrom's, Macy's, Target, they're the only one who has a higher market cap than there was in 2007. Did you know that? So Walmart is playing and they're going to play strong. And so the players of the future are going to be Walmart and Amazon, in my opinion. So where we look at it is we look at the model cast. You have to change the model. So what we've done at SPUD is we spent all our time, energy, and money looking at our model. So what I think is really important, and I think is the ability, the ability to distribute groceries for free. Free delivery. Whoever has free delivery wins. That's what I believe in. 
I believe that the customer will not pay for delivery, and you have to be able to make it free. And why do I say that? Because they say that. And I'd like to ask you guys, because you're a really intelligent group here, the average con Canadian spends $800, family spends $800 a month on groceries. If you have a 10% service charge for delivery, and Amazon has a free delivery, who's gonna win? Just curious. Just a conversation. Anyone? So we're going to charge $12.95 for deliveries? What about $8.95? What about $7.95? So let's just make it eight bucks, call it eight bucks. Let's just say eight bucks. We're going to charge eight bucks. That's 10% of what there is. So now you have a low, then you're not going to play. So it's really, really, really important for us to understand how do we play with free delivery? So over the last five years that we've been really focused on, we've done everything we can to figure out how we can lower our costs and be able to distribute product free. Our minimum order is $35. I can have it zero, I don't care. Just I don't want to deal with people $35. It's not worth my time. But we can deliver product for $35 or whatever, zero, and not charge delivery fees. That's our model. And how we've done that is because we don't look at ourselves as a grocery store. My costs are not like yours. I have seven programmers that speak programming language that just is all wacky. And then I have three consultants that speak other programming language that I don't understand either. And they all talk in gibberish. And that's a, the, the but, with, but what we do do is we turn our inventory relatively quickly. So one of the things that we realized is for us to be successful, we have to turn our inventory. So we turn our inventory in 12.3 days completely, but 63% of our inventory turns in 48 hours. So those are the kind of metrics that we see so we can spin and get fresh product in there. We have virtual technology, meaning that we own technology that allows us to have virtual inventory utilizing our own stuff. We have a completely different way of looking at things because I started to look and say, okay, why don't I really look at what does Amazon use free delivery for? Amazon uses free delivery for a customer acquisition tool. So you're going to go play a game against someone who's playing the game better than you, and you're not even playing by their rules. Now, recently I had a chance to talk to a large retailer, and um, they were uh, from the other side of the, the border, so that means they're down down there. And they're sort of arrogant and saying, well, you know, your technology is this and technology is that. And I sort of said, look, let me get this straight. You're picking and packing out of your store. Because, yeah. And I said, okay, let's, let's understand that. Isn't that what Macy did in 2007 after investing $130 million in their new e-com program? There was not really much of that conversation. See the model, and you can't play by, you know, this is a different model. We're not a grocery store. So if anyone, if, if I have one fault, and I have many, is that I'm not a really great grocery yet. I'm just starting to figure out the grocery game. I'm a really good logistics and distribution and technology company. You know, I was listening today in, a, in one of the panels, and one of the persons said that our, we've seen great growth because our buyers have become a better buyer. And I'm starting to figure out, okay, I've got this layer down, now we're gonna start seeing some really cool stuff from us. So what we're looking at is we're trying to pick up better grocery, but understanding what's really, really important is the logistics. So as you guys are going out on this journey of e-commerce, and this famous journey of e-commerce, and there's many different ways to go. You have the Uber, which is an Instacart strategy. You have the Dropbox. You have the click and collect. You have the home delivery. You have the unmanned delivery. You have all these options to available to you. The one thing that I would highly recommend, and what I've learned in this over the last five years of doing this, 
is you have to look at it from the customer's perspective. Because most of the decisions that were made in 2007 that really aren't relevant in 2017 were made by a CEOs who's compensated on a shorter term basis than what the customer cares for. We can, we can sort of sugarcoat it. But if you're in this room and you're an owner of a company versus an employee, because there's two different people in this room, if you're an owner, I would highly recommend to you to figure out the long game. If you're an employee, I don't think you really, it, that's a different conversation. But the long game here is longer than people think it is. And if you look at what's happened in 2007, zero sales in Amazon for apparel. Their last quarter was 16.9 billion, which is more sales than all those companies combined. And what's really interesting, Target, this company just offered, does anybody know a company called Casper Mattresses? Do we, you guys know that company? Hey, let's get this. <laughs> they launched in 2013. They have 200 million in sales. Do you know what the offer was? One billion. I want that, <laughs> that's like, that's some crazy multiple. That's crazy. So the game's changing. And you guys are gonna have to change this game. And there is a great Russian dead writer by the name of Leo Tolstoy, has a great quote. That everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing themselves. I believe that retail is changing. I believe there's four key things that you have to understand and you have to be really good at. It. And one of them is logistics. And that's you're not. One of them is data, which you have, but you have data from your previous, not your forward data. You want a loyalty point to you, you already, that's debt back data. When they buy online, that's forward data. And you can do the pre all the pre edit stuff and we do all that stuff. And then you have to build community. And then you have to have fun. So that's what we want to do. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. The last thing I just wanted to say was a couple things here where, you know, if you don't think it's going to get bigger than 12%, um, I would just ask you to look at your daughter or your son who's 12 and ask them how much time they play with their iPad or iPhone. And then think in 10 years what that person's going to be buying. So to leave you, I'd leave it with a quote from two very interesting people. Diverse, yet relevant. You are what you eat, Michael Pollan, and we are now connected by the internet like neurons in our brain. Thank you.